Today I wanted to um, make some comments about Eddie Huang, who is the producer of a new series on ABC called Fresh Off the Boat. And um, in my news feeds, it's generating a lot of buzz um, because it's the first all Asian sitcom on television in over 20 years, ever since Mar Margaret Cho's attempt back in the 90s, or maybe late 80s. And, um, and it's being criticized by non-Asians as being racist, because it's portraying the experience of a fresh off the boat kid in America being bullied and confronting um, dominant culture. So I haven't seen the episode. I have followed Eddie Huang's rise to media stardom and his masterful use of the game and playing the game as a complete contrarian within the game is what I really admire about him and the fact that he makes me feel uncomfortable. He makes me sweat. So he's a coach <laughs> to me, in a, in a, a teacher. Uh, and I was noticing that last night when I was watching some of his, um, a couple of his promo videos on the Time magazine website, where he's very calm and he's very aware, as far as I can tell, that he is playing the very game that he is um, a critic of in a way. He's a product of it and a critic of it at the same time and he's gotten into the inner sanctum and has managed to find a team at ABC that's willing to take a risk and produce a show that's true to his voice and how he wants to portray his experience growing up not watered down for um, a palette that can't handle that right now. And it's a metaphor for you know what he did with his food and his restaurant, where he was introducing very hardcore, authentic Taiwanese dishes from his childhood in New York City in the midst of a time where it was all about Asian fusion and trying to elevate um, things into some cultural norm of what good food or high-priced food is in America. Uh, and borrowing influences, but putting it in a package that fit a certain norm. So that's my, my own summary of what I observe of Eddie Huang. And he's played the media game so well with his uh, online TV shows and then his book. And then he's just sort of built, he's just followed this path that is very well established in the mainstream. And he's used it to promote this very um, fringe voice that's not fringe because it's not because it's uncommon but fringe because it's not uh who is typically controlling who shows up on screen and how they show up and here's why he makes me feel uncomfortable because he has achieved success and i it really has caused me to look at how in my heart in my programming I define success and I define it as some, at some level as visibility. So when I see someone on the screen, I define that at some level as success. And he's definitely right there on the main screen. And yet I look at him and he, um, he's totally true to his own voice. You know, he dropped out of law school and he totally owns it and he's like i'm going to i'm going to do a restaurant and he acts like he sort of has this urban black hip hop accent to his english which is unusual for me because that's not my experience of white america i mean of of assimilated mainstream america but he uh always loved that culture hip hop and that urban culture and so he kind of he has that look he borrows some of the fashion influences he speaks with that again that accent and it goes against all of my programming that says 
what it means to be successful. And this is, again, according to some kind of dominant culture or elitism that I bought into, uh, that you speak a certain way, you use correct grammar and English as defined by the school system, and you're, um, you have a certain level of decorum, you dress a certain way, and you behave, basically. And when I see him on the screen in a position of power and influence and success, and I see him acting that way, and I see that he has a Chinese face, and he talks about his Chinese upbringing, it really, uh, it requires me, I'm not going to say force, but it requires me to look at how much I've bought into a definition of making it and success that was defined by a dominant culture I didn't even know I was buying into at the time. And I don't like to play the race card because it's so much more than race. This has to do with class and educational status and what we, what we um, ascribe to these degrees and institutions and positions of supposed elevation. And by, you know, he found this media platform, which is another way that we unconsciously elevate people by putting them on a screen. So he's using that to get his voice out there and to get visibility. And so I definitely have the feeling of, you know, there's that twinge of jealousy about like, you know, why can't I learn to play the game a little bit better? And why do I insist on being such a, a recluse and an independent um, and I know that the answer is this is what I require at this moment to feel my heart and hear my voice and develop my voice. And yet it's, it's totally not the only way to do it. It's what my life journey required based on my emotional patterns and my own belief systems. And, um, but to look at someone who has, to me, the audacity to create a success path to visibility that involves creating this image and being willing to be seen as this image that totally goes in the face of all ideas of what success should be and in a way kind of borrows and gloms onto other models of how success has been in our society. Um, is um, it's eye-opening. And so I want to just touch that discomfort for me and notice that even in my making these videos, at this moment, this is, I guess, my version of um, destroying the mythology in my mind about what it requires to have a voice and to be visible. Do I need to have a professional videographer? Do I need to... Um, think about hair and makeup and making it look like I'm Rachel Ray or some, you know, some made up star or is it okay? And by definition, turning on the video camera and sharing it, I'm making it okay to just do it ad hoc in my life as the thoughts occur to me and allow the growth to happen from there. And um, that's the scary experiment that um, I'm giving my per myself permission to do with absolutely no idea what, what that means. And I'm seeing uh, that this, my version of this, giving myself visibility in this form is is deeply healing for me because it's going in the face of so many of the rules that I still am so susceptible to about what things should look like in order to be whatever. So thank you, Eddie Huang. <laughs> for giving me the chance to feel my discomfort.
and to feel that sense of really you can do that and and that's inspiring and it's triggering and um i'm gonna make sure i turn on my television for fresh off the boat to see what's happening there and to um to show interest i mean interest in eyeballs is really the game not so much approval because you know people need to watch something in order to criticize it they also need to watch it to praise it so um that's it thanks thanks eddie huang and thank you um thank you discomfort <laughs> my teachers today